we would like to calculate supermassive black hole masses. Specifically, we would like to calculate the supermassive black hole mass in the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Here we're looking at a graph that's centered on the center of our Milky Way galaxy, which is Sagittarius A star at 0, 0 in this graph coordinate system. We're looking at various objects making their elliptical or circular orbits around S GRA star or Sagittarius A star. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the orbit of S2. S2 has an orbital period of 15.6 years. Its pericenter is around 120 AU or 1.8 times 10 to the 13th meters. The orbit has an eccentricity of 0.88. We would like to find the mass contained within the orbital period of S2. We're given a conversion of 1 parsecs is equal to 3.26 light years should we need it, need it. We're given some equations. We're given Newton's version of Kepler's third law, which is P squared is equal to A cubed divided by M total. And we're given an equation that relates pericenter distance to the semi-major axis distance given the eccentricity E. Let's go to the equation of Newton's version of Kepler's third law. We want to solve for m total. In order to know m total, we need to know p squared and a cubed. Well, we know p. p is 15.6 years. So the only thing we need to find is a. We do not know A, but we know we can get it from the eccentricity equation once we know D and E. The eccentricity we already know is 0 0.88, and D is our pericenter distance of around 120 AU. So the first thing we want to do is solve for A, which is equal to D divided by 1 minus E. So we're going to set this equal to D, which is 120 AU. So the pericenter distance is the distance of closest approach. So we know that the orbit of S2 is highly elliptical, and its distance of closest approach is this little piece right there, and that's 120 AU. We want to solve for A. A is the semi-major axis which is about half the distance of the longest part of the elliptical orbit. So A is equal to 120 AU divided by 1 minus E. And E, we know, is 0 0.88. It's the eccentricity of the orbit. A perfectly circular orbit would have an eccentricity of zero. We have a value of 0.88, which shows you that we have a more elliptical orbit. So now we need to take 120 divided by 1 minus 0.88. Let's go to our Google calculator. We take 120, we want to divide it by parentheses, 1 minus 0.88, close parentheses, equals, and our value is 1,000. So we have a value here of 1,000, and our units are the same units of AU. So now we know the semi-major axis distance of A. And we can easily substitute in, substitute it in Newton's version of Kepler's third law to find the total mass contained within that elliptical orbit. And all we need to know is going to be a cubed and p squared. So a is 1,000, and we need to cube it, and then we need to divide that by p squared. We're given p, p is 15.6 years, so we just need to put that in, 15.6, and it is squared, so we need to square it. So we need to take a 1,000 cubed. Let's do that part first. Let's clear out. We have 1,000 x to the y cubed. It equals. And now the next thing we want to do is divide by 15.6 squared. So we divide by parentheses 
0.6 x to the y squared, close it, and that equals 4109138. So we can take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and move the decimal point over 6 spaces to get 4.1. So we put 4.1. And I moved the decimal point over six spaces, so I know the answer is million here. And since we have units of AU for the A cubed, and we have units of years for the P squared, that means M must be in terms of solar mass units. So the mass contained within the elliptical part of the orbit of S2 is 4.1 million solar masses. And that's how you find the amount of mass that's contained within this orbit of S2. Now we expect most of that mass to be located at the point SGRA star.